Okay, I'm here at the Capitol with both Representative Zerwas and Representative Lesh, who stood on very opposing viewpoints uh, with the recently passed measure to punish protesters or to stiffen the penalties against protesters who block freeways, bridges, things like that. Uh, which one of you guys wants to go first? Go ahead. Well, I think what's important to realize is the narrow, uh, the narrow of that provision. We're talking about people that block traffic on a freeway, block access to an airport, or block the light rail train. And so it certainly isn't uh, penalizing protesters as much as people that are participating in illegal blockades. And so it's three things that are already illegal under current statute, and we're taking it from a misdemeanor to a gross misdemeanor. You could protest in a million ways and in a million places that are 100% legal and isn't blocking a freeway, isn't blocking access to an airport, and isn't blocking a train. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you block a freeway, you ought to go to jail. Uh, why? Why? It's against the law. It's a huge, uh, huge impact on commerce, public safety, and people trying to get around. I talked on the floor of the House yesterday about two constituents I had that contacted me that had huge issues with trying to get to the airport to see a dying mother who missed a flight and wasn't there while her mother took her last breath. And I had and then a woman who contacted me who waited three months for an appointment uh, down at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and while driving down there, got stopped by a freeway blockade, didn't make it to her appointment, called back down to the Mayo Clinic, and they were told, sure, we could get you back in in another three months. And so she sat at home in Elk River in pain for an extra 90 days waiting for relief. This impacts real people and the Republican caucus and two dozen Democrats believe that it needs to be a more severe penalty. And Representative Lesh, you've been pretty outspoken uh, about recent measures that were passed off the House floor to restrict and penalize protests. Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I could. They're, they're uh, uh, meaningless efforts um, that would intimidate protesters. I mean, we already have laws in place at a misdemeanor level. They wanted to make it a gross misdemeanor only to intimidate protesters. There's nothing else that this would do because of all the protests that have occurred around Minnesota that irritated some folks like the authors of the bill and supporters of the bill. None of them have gotten over 90 days in jail. So I'm hard pressed to decide what the motivation is behind offering bills like this other than to impinge on the free speech of people who irritate you and disagree with you. That's not what America is about. What about Republican contentions that, listen, this can cause harm, what if an EMT needs to get by, what about the disruption to people's, you know, ability to earn a living? All right, then penalize that. If you can prove that there was uh, impingement upon the ability to, to earn a living or that uh, a vehicle couldn't get through, then you should have uh, passed a bill that said that, but they didn't. They passed a bill that would penalize and intimidate everybody who wants to uh, have their speech read. I'd note that the march on the, the picture of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Martin Luther King, the march from Selma to Montgomery, was blocking a highway. Yes. Uh, people are concerned about, well, what about my ability to get to work? The, the bus boycott, uh, that Rosa Parks created the boycott about and Martin Luther King went down there, infringed on people's ability to get to work, okay, because they shut down the bus service. And there were some of the hallmarks of civil rights in this country. And the Republicans don't want any part of that. The idea for a penalty, for a, for a bill, for a law, is to either deter the activity or punish the activity. Clearly, it's not being deterred, and we don't believe the punishment is significant enough. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, what about DFL contentions that this infringes on uh, the right to free and peacefully assemble? You do not peacefully assemble in the center lane of I-94. You have no constitutional First Amendment right to block a freeway. If you believe you do, you're wrong. You've been misinformed. You do not have a right to block a freeway or to block access to an airport or to stop a train. You, that's not a right of yours. Okay, if you're driving down a road and you can't get through because the protests there, you're irritated. Everybody, every single person who's trying to get through, I don't care how much you agree with the protest or not, you're irritated about it. But that's the whole point of protest. Inconvenience is the heart of protest. And I think it's ironic that all these young unarmed black men are, are around the country 
are getting shot, but no one seems to care until they have to take a detour to get to the Mall of America. That's when people start to listen, and that's why free speech is so important. What about the idea that um, you're crossing a line from free speech to, say, civil disobedience and those types of things are treated differently than First Amendment rights? Can you speak to that? Well, that's also the right to freely assemble. So uh, that is still the right to peacefully assemble and civil disobedience. Remember, that is still falls under the First Amendment. Okay, now at the same time, if you disobey, you are going to be arrested and put in jail. But remember that all of this is in context and the penalties have to be commensurate with the crime. So deciding that you're going to punish someone by up to a year in jail is really draconian for someone who peacefully assembles in front of City Hall and doesn't leave the second they say on the bullhorn, I've declared this to be an unlawful assembly, get out of here. Well, and if you don't right away because you can't get through the crowd, suddenly you, you spend a year in jail. I mean, that's just silly. So uh, there needs to be there needs to be some balance in this, and, and that bill didn't offer balance. Question. I yeah, wonder yeah. if uh, spending a year in jail instead of 90 days uh, would have dissuaded Rosa Parks from uh, sitting uh, at the front of that bus. I wonder if it would have dissuaded uh, Martin Luther King from speaking to those sanitation workers in Memphis. I wonder if it would have dissuaded the original Tea Partiers who tossed the tea off the boat in Boston Harbor. I wonder if it would have dissuaded so many of uh, American patriots who were responsible for the activism that got us where we are now. And I think the answer to that is no. Or me. You can have a hundred thousand people come and protest and shout at the top of their lungs and petition their government, and this bill wouldn't have impacted a single one of them. Not one! They started at the Capitol here, on the road all the way up to Cathedral. And the way that you want to split hairs on this is as because they weren't actually on the interstate, but they were blocking every other road within a half mile of this capital. That's your distinction. You know, the split in the hairs of this, I think, um, just goes to show you that this is only about irritation. Okay, this is because we get irritated by someone that makes us take a detour or someone that makes us 20 minutes late to the airport. And I understand that because I get irritated too. But there's no need to make this a year in jail and just try to intimidate people. That's what intimidates and suppresses free speech in Minnesota. And this would have not impacted them at all because this is so narrowly crafted so that you would have to block a freeway. You would have to decide, I must march on the freeway. I have to stop people from even getting to the airport. I'm going to stand on these train tracks. We we did not see that behavior. We did not saw nothing that this bill would come into question. What about the antidotes, Representative Lush, that, um, that people are inconvenienced or that there might have been some people in EMTs that needed to get by and people have been harmed because of the blocking? I, I have not heard of any emergency vehicles that didn't get through. Representative Zerwas offered an anecdote about uh, he heard about someone that maybe took the wrong way to get to the Mayo Clinic um, and, and sat in traffic. I get that. Um, that's difficult. Um, but at the same time, when you're talking about suppressing the free speech rights of an entire population, that's using a sledgehammer to kill a mosquito. There needs to be some reasonableness in this. There is no suppression of free speech in this bill whatsoever. And I can give you uh, some examples from Regents Hospital of their medic rig that had every window smashed out of it, Representative Lesh. So to say that no emergency vehicles were impeded uh, during these protests and riots is completely and wholly untrue. Was that on, was that on the highway or was that in front of the airport? It was neither in front of the, it was trying to leave Regents Hospital, Representative Lesh. Why didn't you craft a bill that said that? If that's what made you so mad, why didn't you craft a bill that said that? You said that no emergency vehicles were impeded. I'll show you the picture. Well, let me it. ask you about this. At what point does um, inconvenience trump the constitutional rights, I mean, of people? I mean, and you say they have, they have your, no right to. Your rights stop when you infringe on someone else's rights. And so the idea that you're going to stop well, a freeway... To be honest, that, that, that's not correct. So that's not in the law. The idea that you're going to stop traffic on a freeway, you do, you do not have the First Amendment right from the center lane of I-94. You just don't. If you think you do, go out and stop on I-94 and pull out a cardboard sign. I wish you luck. You're going to go to jail. Uh, I wonder if that same argument holds true when you're talking about the thousands 
of individuals in the South and throughout this country who marched on highways. This was, previ this was before the interstate highway system. They marched on highways in support of civil rights. These are names that you know. Why is it that those people should have gone to jail for a year? We're talking about today, and we're talking about this bill moving forward and the idea that you cannot block a freeway, you cannot block an airport, and you cannot block a train. And if you do, you deserve to go to jail. There's already laws against uh, that, though, right? There, there are. We have existing laws, and we've said that before. You can go to jail for 90 days yeah. on that. And Representative Zerwas thinks by making it a year, uh, somehow that's going to make it less likely that people step up for their civil rights, for their voting rights, uh, and I disagree. It's a go-to move for protests. So we've seen it like a few days after the election. We saw marchers take to I-94 because their candidate didn't win, Representative Lesh. So there's a whole host of issues that have caused people in recent months to march onto a freeway. The reality is this law is uh, crafted very narrowly. Well, and what I will tell you is, obviously this issue is an emotional issue. And it, brings out, uh, it brings out emotions and folks. What I'll tell you is with Representative Lesh and myself is there, there isn't one issue that defines um, how we work together in, in the legislature. And so while he and I vehemently disagree on this bill, there are things with criminal justice reform issues that we have worked together very closely on, including our bill that was also in the public safety safety bill uh, dealing with uh, traffic infractions uh, for people that are uh, in deep poverty and having trouble uh, paying their traffic fines, making sure that those individuals aren't unduly punished uh, through having their licenses revoked, allowing them to be on a payment plan and, and work through the system that way to retain their licenses to keep going to uh, keep going to work and keep their families intact. Uh, Representative Lesh was a partner on that issue and helped me navigate that issue through the legislature uh, this session. So there are issues that we work together on, and there's issues, of course, that we disagree on. I, I agree. We, you got to fight up here. That's how you get to a, yeah. a good result most of the time is uh, through vigorous arguments. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you both for uh, your comments tonight and your thoughtful remarks regarding uh, this very important matter to your constituents. Thank you both. Thank Have you a great so Have a great evening. All right, bye guys.